All right, so mean, median, mode, and range. Have you heard these words before? Do you remember what they mean? Huh, can I just have this? Let's start with me, because I might remember what that one is. I bet you'll remember once we do it. So mean is another word for average. Like your test average, not like average, like, oh, how was lunch? Ah, how was average? Not like that kind of average. Average like, oh, what's your average test score? So speaking of test scores, let's do that. So I think I've done it a couple times in here where I tell you what the average test score is. So if I take everybody's grade, I can tell you, oh, on average, students in this class scored a whatever it is. So where is that number coming from? Let's just pretend I take five kids and their test scores are, I don't know, maybe there was an 80, uh, 73, 68, a 91 and a 87. So these are the test scores and I wanna find the average test score. Do you remember how to do that? Anybody recall? Go ahead, Sophie. Perfect. So if I want to find the average of anything, I'm going to add up all the numbers together, and then I just divide by how many numbers there were in my list. So first, add all numbers. Two, divide by how many numbers were in the list. You guys are welcome to um, grab a calculator if you want. So I'm going to write out what I'm doing. I'm going to be adding 80 plus 73 plus 68 plus 91 plus 87. And in this case, oh, no. I'm going to divide that answer, whatever it is, by what number? Five, because there's five test scores in this list. So I grab my calculator and I'm going to add 80, 73, 68, 91, 87. So that gets me 399. And then I will divide that number by five. So that gets me an average test score or a mean test score of, I got 79.8. the mean test score. When you're finding the mean, I always like to ask myself, okay, was that number kind of reasonable? So I just look at my scores. Yeah, okay, they were all kind of right around the 80s, some higher, some lower, of course. So getting a, a mean test score like this makes sense. If I had done this and the mean test score was a 60, that makes no sense. Everybody scored higher than a 60, so how could the average have been 60? You know what I mean? So I like to just make sure that my answer is reasonable. It should be occurring in between my values, right? So that is a perfectly reasonable answer in this case. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna give you another list. You find me the mean of that list. So what do we do? How about temperatures? So if I just do, oh yeah, we'll do temperatures for this week and we'll see what the average temperature or the mean temperature for the week will be. So, oh, it doesn't let me go like backwards in time. That's okay, I'll just start with today. 
So today's temperature, I'll do the highs, 54, 58, 60, 68 on Sunday, yes. Monday will be a 60, Tuesday will be a 67. We'll do a full week's worth. And then Wednesday is a 67. Wow, Sunday is going to be, and it's sunny. Oh, this whole weekend, Saturday is still 60, no chance of rain Sunday. Oh my gosh, what am I going to do? I don't know. I really need to clean the garage. But anyway, so go ahead, find me the average temperature for the upcoming week. You have it? You do? Okay, hold on to it for one second. to get my answer. When you're doing these, by the way, I would highly recommend actually not using your phone. Unless I guess if you do the phone, but you hold it to the side so you can actually see all the numbers. Because if you mess up one of the numbers and you can't see what it was, let me see, if on my phone, if I mess one up, can you go back without deleting everything? No. Oh, so then don't use your phone. It's not going to be, like if I'm on the fifth number and I accidentally mistype, if I can't just change that and I have to type all the numbers in again, annoying. If you use one of these calculators, yes, these yellow ones. So if you use this, let me just show you. So if I realize, oops, that 60 was messed up, I can literally just go back and fix just that one. And I don't have to rewrite all the numbers. So that would be super annoying. So I would highly recommend a yellow calculator when you're doing any of this stuff, just so you don't have to retype things. Because I mean, you're going to mess up at some point. And I don't want to have to. Re or what if you don't even, you, you didn't even realize, but if you have it on here, it shows you all the numbers on the screen. And then you can see, oops, I did mess up there. All right. Anywho, Connor, you have an answer. What is your answer? 62, you say. First, I ask myself, is that a reasonable number? Yeah, if I look at these, they're all kind of right around that 62 mark. So that's a totally reasonable answer. And you are right. If you add them all together, uh, what did I get? 432. We are 432, right? Oh, 434, sorry. So it'll be 434, and we're going to divide it by seven. So that is correct, 62 degrees. That's not bad for um, a week in April. Oh, is it gonna hit May this week? Or are we not there yet? I think it's Sunday. Sunday, yep, you're right. Nice. Okay, does this make sense? Do you remember mean now that, you, now that we've talked about it? Add them all together, divide by how many there are. Mean and average are the same thing. So they're really kind of interchangeable. So why don't we, uh, we'll do um, median mode and range when we get back, but we'll pause right here for lunch, okay? All right. Pause over here. All right, so there was mean, of the temperatures for the upcoming week. So now let's talk median. Does everybody remember what that is and how you find it? Median. Isn't it like uh, something? Yes. So median is when you literally put your numbers in order from least to greatest and you take the number that's physically in the middle. All right. So let's put a definition down.
So if I wanted to find my median, I'm going to use the same set of um, temperature values that we just used, but now we'll find the median of it instead of the mean. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is list my numbers in order from least to greatest. So looks like I'm going to start off the same way, 54, 58, and then I'd have 60, 60, my 67s, and then the highest I ever get to is 68. So step one, put your numbers in order from least to greatest. Okay, and now I literally want the number in the middle. So one thing that I do sometimes is I cross them off because sometimes you have this weird situation where you have two numbers in the middle and we'll talk about what to do with that in a second. So if I'm gonna find the median, I might cross off the first number, cross off the back, cross off the front, cross off the back, cross off the front, cross off the back. This time we get lucky, there's literally only one number in the middle, it's 60. So the median temperature would be 60. So you'll notice in this case, the median and the mean aren't that far off from each other. So why would we use one? Like why, why do we have two different things? Why wouldn't I always just use a mean or a median? Does anybody know the answer to that? I'll give you a good example. If you are looking, um, let's say I wanted to know about the house prices in Sturbridge. If you look up house prices in Sturbridge, it's usually going to give you the median home value. It won't give you the mean home value. Anybody have an idea why? So people like will want to buy it. Well, they agree on a deal or something, right? Higher the price. So what could happen is actually, can we use Woodstock, Connecticut for one second? That's what my grandma did. Woodstock, Connecticut happens to have a castle. There is a castle in Woodstock, Connecticut. Oh, I've seen it. Yes. I, I'm not sure, no, but it's it's it's, it's, it's nuts, right? It's from his dad's. It's his stocks. It's his dad's stocks. That's how it's called. And my grandpa knows to do. Really? Well, so here's a perfect example. So Woodstock, Connecticut, you have this one house that's, let me see if I can find it real quick. It's, it's several million dollars. Let me see if I can find it. Woodstock. Castle in Woodstock. It was recently for sale, at least within the last couple of years. Oh yeah, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, check this. Can you see it? Look at this. This, can I click on this picture? Look at this, okay? This is insane. This castle, $60 million. In Connecticut? Yeah, my grandpa's So that's exactly the point, right? So if you counted this castle with all of the other normal houses in the town and you found the average, the average home price is going to look like it's sky high because you have this one house that's worth so much money. It's bringing up the average home value so much. You get what I'm saying? So if someone is looking, they, maybe they want to move to Connecticut. Oh, sure. If you are trying to, you know, maybe you're trying to figure out where you want to live and you are looking, you're trying to settle on a town and you're like, oh my gosh, the average home price is $10 million per house. I could never afford anything there. That's why they usually don't use a mean for home values in a town. Because for exactly this reason, one home that's worth 60 million would, would skew all of the, all of the, um, the results. So what do we use instead? A median, because that median, right? I'm just looking for the number that's literally in the middle. So that 60 million is gonna get crossed off first. You get what I'm saying? So when you have a number that is way bigger or way smaller than all the others, that's what we call an outlier. So if your set of numbers has an outlier, 
one number that's way high or way low, I would not want to use mean on that. I want to use mean. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Do you guys know Mrs. Dalton? No. Um, Mrs. Dalton used to live right up the street from this, but look at the, it's like a, it's literally a castle. Look, there's knights. I don't know if you can see it. There's a, a knight in shining armor right here. They're not funny. You see them? Look at that. I can have my whole family with that table in my street. I know. I have 10 people in my household. Look at these elephants. It's wild, right? Look at it. The whole kitchen's like round. So, anyway. Oh, that's it. Oh, no. Here's the bathroom. Uh, we'll see. Oh, I love those ornate chairs. They're so cool. Wow, what is that? Is that the shower? My goodness. Ooh. He has all fancy. kinds of um, airport vehicles outside, too. Like all like the airport fire trucks and everything. They're all in his oh, yard. Wow. I'm like right on the water. I mean, it is it is lovely. But, um, oh yeah, no, we're just recycling. That is a great example of why medium, we want different values. I wanna have median for something like this when I have an outlier. I want mean when I'm just averaging most of those. Would you mind not crinkling? Thank you. All right. So let's talk about median when you have two numbers in the middle. Maddie, are you listening? Yeah. All right, let's do, I gotta flip the page. So let's say I had some numbers. Um, let's do, I don't know, it could be anything. I'll just give you a list of numbers to find the median of. Let's say I had five, 10, I'll put them in order too, just to make our lives easier. 19, 21, 30, and 45, okay? So if your instructions were to find the median, When I have an even number of numbers, look at what's gonna happen. I'm gonna start off the same way. I have it in order. Okay, great. Step two, I literally wanna find the number that's in the middle. So I cross off the five, I cross off the 45. I cross off the 10, I cross off the 30. But now I have two numbers that are in the middle. Anybody know what you do when you have two numbers in the middle? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you basically find the average of those two numbers. So I'm gonna add these two numbers together and divide by two. So in this case, I mean, it's easy because 19 to 21, so it's got to be 20. But that's the math that I'm actually doing. I'm going to add 19 and 21 together, and I'm going to divide it by two. Is that all right? I don't even know how long we be there. Two seconds. So I get 40 over two, which, as we know, is going to be 20. So the median would actually be 20 in this case. So it's not either of the numbers that are actually in the middle. It's the average of the two. Okay, so if you have two numbers in the middle, find their average. Everybody's okay so far? All right, mode is super easy. You probably remember it. Anybody remember mode? Mode? Mode. I'm writing it like that because mode, you can, it will help you to remember you're going to find the most often number. So it's the number that occurs the most often in your list. So I'm going to grab those uh, temperatures that we had from our list, what we did before. So our list was 54, 58, 60, 60. Oh, this is actually a great example because if I ask you what the mode was, the number that's occurring the most often, I actually have a tie, don't I? I have two numbers that are occurring twice. 
So you can have a tie for mode. This one has two modes. It's 60 and 67. All right, so I'm just looking for what's the most popular number. In this case, I have two of them. So the mode is 60 and 67. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm glad you asked that. Let's say I wanted to do a second example. I'll use the number, the numbers at the top I just had, 5, 10, 19, 21, 30, and 45. In this set of numbers, there is no most popular number. They all only appear once, so this would have no mode. So it is possible to literally not have a mode. Nobody is the most popular. They are all occurring just once. Oh, I'm so glad you asked that. I would have totally forgot. No mode. So I can certainly have one mode. If there's one clear winner, I'd have one. If there's a tie, I can have more than one. And if everybody's the same, then I just don't have a mode at all. You guys with me? All right, so now what I wanna do, I wanna tie in a line plot and see if we can find median, mean, median, and mode from a line plot or a dot plot, I mean, sorry. Okay, ready? So another example, I'm going to give you a dot plot. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, so what I would like you to do is find me, find the mean, median, and mode of the numbers in our dot plot. It might be helpful, and you don't have to do this, but if it, if it helps you, to turn this dot plot back into a list of numbers. So if you literally list them out zero, I have one twice, so I'd have zero, one, one, two. So if you want to do that, that can be very helpful. I actually think I'll do that. Just a reminder, we have a quiz tomorrow. I will go over right? I will do one of each. We do have homework tonight, but you won't have homework tomorrow. That's pretty good. I'd rather have homework tomorrow. Mean is when you're going to add all your numbers together and divide by how many numbers you have. Okay, does anybody have the mean? Jay, what'd you get? Yeah, so remember mean, you're adding all the digits together, dividing by how many you have. So if you literally add zero, one, one, two, three, 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 four, if you add them all together, I got that was 17. So I'm going to be doing 17 divided by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 
Now, you might, I'm glad that we had a zero in there. Do I count a zero as one of my numbers? Yeah, that's one of the values, right? So if this was like, um, you know, homework grades, if someone didn't do their homework, that counts. Well, I mean, they got a zero on it, but it counts as a grade for the class. So they would have a, like, so if this was the average so like, homework scores. So like the average grade in the class. Right. So I'd have to put that zero in. So when you divide that, I get 2.125. And if you round that, that's fine. Well, I don't think you have to. You could cut some slack. No, everybody should do it. But that would be the mean score. So even a score of zero counts as a grade, right? Yep. Median. Median, I do think it's a little bit easier to find that when you have the numbers listed out than trying to find it in the dot plot. So cross off the first, the last, the first, the last, the first, the last. Oh, I have two in the middle. So what must my median be in this case? 2.5, right? I want halfway between two and three. So add them together, that's five divided by two. So that's where I get a 2.5 from. So my median score is a 2.5. And then the mode is super easy to find from the dot plot itself. What's my mode? Three, perfect. Does that make sense? And I forgot about the range, but the range takes two seconds. Does anybody remember what the range is? Like how close it is to the mean? Mm -hmm. No, no, no. I meant like uh, answer that. So, so I don't... All the ranges is just your highest value minus your lowest. That's it. So if I doing the same dot plot example, uh, it would just be literally four, right? Because four minus zero. So if I kept my same list, one, one, two, three, three, four, I would literally just do four minus zero equals four. So that would be my range. Okay, does all that make sense? You've seen this stuff before, right? It's just been a while since you talked about me meeting mode uh, or no? Maybe. All right. I will tell you, they love me meeting mode in the MCAS. Okay. They love putting this in there. So we will be talking about this occasionally throughout the rest of the course. What? Uh, you 10th grade only. Are you in 10th or no? If you are in 10th grade, you take it in May this year. That sounds right. Yep. So, we made a mode. Wait, what about the other, like, what about other classes? June. Or what are the other ones? That must be a science one. Yeah. yeah. That's like, so it's just for like math is only in 10th grade. Math is only in 10th science. You take a nine. Uh, you'll take English in 10th grade also. When I failed my last English class, um, but if you pass them all in 10th grade and the one in your freshman year, then you don't have to take any more after that. So Man, that's a hard challenge. I think you will do just fine. Okay. Wait, my I wait, never mind. Never mind. Nope. All right. So let me give you your homework. <laughs> Yes, I was thinking maybe just odds on this. The easiest one sounds good. Not the odds. And you can't even do the last one because the numbers aren't even there. So you really only have to do one through nine odds. Um, yeah, I can go for that. So if you want to do them all, doesn't mean I will, but 
Okay, so again, we're only going to do one through nine odd. You can't do 11 even if you wanted to, because for whatever reason, the dots aren't there. So, yeah, I don't know what happened, but that's okay. Sure. <laughs> I don't see why not. Well, you'd have to then answer the question, find the mean mean amount of range of those. Okay, I will open this on Jupiter in just a second. Upload the notes. Of course you can. When you're done, put it right here. All right. I have no idea. 